el Hello, people. Hello. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Andrea. Wendy, Hi, Anna. Hello. How was it? How was your day today? Really tired for me. All right. Yes. The good thing is that uh, you're working from home, so it gives you like a lot of more flexibility, right? Yes, kind of, kind of. Yes. That's <laughs> All right. And what do you do yesterday for the Mother's Day? What did I do? Yeah, what did you do for the for the Mother's Day? Um. Well, I went to to breakfast with my mother-in-law. Oh. And, and then I went to my house, the house of my mother, to visit oh. her, and we. And I bought a. How do you say? Like a, sorbet, like a cake of ice cream cake. Ice cream cake, yes. And okay. I bought a, a nice ice cream cream awesome. cake from Pops, and that was kind of my gift to her. All right, that's good. It's a, it's a good. It was a good way uh, to celebrate and a good present to it. A delicious present. <laughs> yes, because of the uh, the weather is really hot. Yeah, it it's, is. It's true. It's like better than the than a bread. Definitely. Yes. Definitely. Yes. So right now for this weather, an ice cream or something cold is a good gift. It's a good thing to do. Yes. Right. All right. Thank you for sharing, Andrea. All right. So um welcome guys, Camilo, Claudia, Ricardo, Aníbal. Thank you so very much for being here. So let's see. Did you enjoy your extra day off, Ricardo? What do you do in your day off? Well, uh, since it was Mother's Day, I spent the day well, most part, most of the part, uh, with my with my grandma, since my mother is in is in Spain. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I have breakfast. I I have a video chat with my mom uh, during the morning. Oh, all right. While I have breakfast, and then like in, in the afternoon for lunch, I visit my grand uh, my grandma. Like I said, mm -hmm. and we have lunch with my sister. Okay. Do you live far from her or? Like not close? really. Just like um, ten minutes close. Well, all right. Yeah, I'm lying. By it's car? Like 15 minutes close then. Oh, wait, with the car, yeah. All right, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a lot faster that yeah. way. Yeah. All right, excellent. Well, thank you for sharing, Ricardo. What about you, Camilo? What do you do yesterday? Um, I went to tr take break breakfast with my sister and my mother. Um, it, it was a little funny because all the restaurants was <laughs> yeah full house. <laughs> yeah. All all of them. It was like uh, I can wait two hours for taking a breakfast. So we moved home for I don't remember what, what was the place, but we found one. Uh, we take a breakfast with my um. How do you say cuñado? I don't remember, but. Brother-in-law. Ah, brother-in-law. Yeah, my brother-in-law. I mean the, uh, my sister's boyfriend. Uh, we we take two cup breakfast with, uh, their fathers too. All his, right. his fathers too. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's true. All the restaurants were like packed. Yeah. Uh, I, saw, I saw a picture of uh, Pollo Campero. Hell, oh my goodness! It was like. What the hell? It's not going to be the last day to eat them. So, but anyway, yeah, so we, we was day. listening the the to the radio. I, somebody uh, made a funny comment that it's something like today. Even the the I don't remember the word the uh, it, in Spanish is like 
la propusería más eh, humilde, something like that. All right. It's fall. Uh, but I yeah. don't remember exactly what, what was the That's comment, true. but it, it was something like that because all the places you go to every pupuseria in El Salvador, it was like it was full. <laughs> yeah. It was it was it was packed. We took her mother to um get Chinese food at Royal Esquina in Santa Tecla. It was packed. And it was uh it was poi, it was full. Uh Pueblo Viejo, it was crowded everything was packed yesterday for the mother's sake but you know business life right <laughs> so but you right. got some food kevin i'm sorry uh, uh did you uh, get some food yeah uh we went to eat uh at this this place royal is a, it's a chinese restaurant like China. yeah for me it's the best place <laughs> but the, uh, I uh, was asking you because yesterday also to celebrate to my mom with my family, uh, we decided in, in in order to get some food from there, but this the place that is in San Salvador, oh. uh, to avoid the crowded place, Definitely. Uh, we decided to go for delivery. All right. To, to pick to to pick out right to pick out right. from there. But uh, my husband was uh, telling me that the place was empty, but the, the crowd that was with the people that was paying to, to pick the food there and then go to home. Oh. So I was, I was surprised <laughs> because I guess the people, yeah. in order to avoid the crowded uh, restaurants, they prefer yeah. to order and then pick the, the, the food. That's true. Yeah, yeah. in some places. Uh, they prefer to order takeout in order to avoid this, you know, this packed uh, places, right? But and next mm -hmm. next month we have Father's Day. It's gonna be like same story, right? Um. So okay, guys. So anyways, and somehow we enjoyed uh, the Mother's Day. I don't know if you went out with your mothers or if you just took a day off. Either way, we enjoyed it, right? So that's good. So we are going to start uh, again. Uh, let's get down to business right now. And uh, today we are going to finish unit number two. Uh, tomorrow we are going to start unit number three, all right? So we can move forward. As Jessica, um, no, Jessica, no, Gabriela. As Gabriela was saying in the chat uh, on Monday, I will make sure every everyone has 50% uh, uh, completed in the platform. Some of you are more than 50% already, but some of you, I mean, not you, but some of the class classmates are uh, under that percentage. So I'm gonna uh, check on that on Monday, just to make sure we are on the same page, working the same level and all that. All right, guys, so <clears throat> let's see. Who remembers the meaning of by all accounts? In, in, in other words, like in simpler, in simpler words, what does by all account means? If you have a good memory, you, uh, you should remember this one. By all accounts, there is a sentence right there. There is a picture, so you can, you know, try to try to uh, guess the meaning for that if you don't remember. I recall, Kevin, that uh, that could be like uh, another way to express, like uh, uh, the rumor has is that for example. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very good, Wendy. Thank you for that. So yeah. That it's another way to say uh this is another this is another um uh, uh phrasal I mean not phrasal but idiom this is another idiom that has uh, the same meaning rumor has that I taught you another one that is word is that all right so and in simpler words if you want to use this one it's uh according to according to what uh, people say. So that's the meaning of by all accounts. And you have three options. Rumor has it that he's a nice guy. 
word is that he's a nice guy. And according to what people say, he's a nice guy. So you have four options. However, as I said before, if you want to sound better, you need to use the phrases that we already have in English. All right, so let's see. That was on, on Tuesday. So what about this one? Oops, okay. To have a run in with someone. What is the meaning of to have a run in with someone? For example, let's say this one. Uh, let's see. Anybody, please read the sentence. Yesterday, I had a run in with my boss. All right. So, Anibal, any idea what I had a run in with my boss? Yesterday, I had a run in with my boss. Like a meeting or something? Like a what? I'm sorry? A, a meeting? meeting? A meeting. A meeting? Hmm. Let's see. A run in could be a meeting. Well, we can have, can we have a run in? with somebody in a meeting yes but it's not a meeting itself look at this it's, picture. Like, it's like a discussion all right well <laughs> like in a little bit like in a heated way uh yeah that's correct so instead of a discussion we can say we had an argument okay. right so an argument is when when the talk begins to get more heated and violent somehow, right? So we, uh, it, it was like it was like that. So we had a little problem. We have a little argument with my boss, all right? So that's to have a run in with someone. I had a run in with my brother because I wanted to go out uh, to eat pizza and he wanted to go out to eat um, sushi. So we had a little argument. We had a run in. All right. So that's uh, another way to say we had uh, like an argument, a little fight, a little fight. All right. Very good, guys. So remember all these words, remember all those phrases that can come handy whenever you are talking to um, people from abroad. All right. So let's see. Let, let me stop sharing right now. Let's go to Jared's. We're going to touch the gerunds uh, today. It's going to be the last time. And then we're going to move on to another, to another part. All right. So let me put it right here. All right. Gerunds. Let's see. We have uh, five different functions for a gerund. Okay. So let's see. Claudia, can you help us read the function number one? Okay, uh, subject, example sentence, swimming helps me unwind. Unwind, all right. So uh, be based on this context or in this example, can you, Claudia, or anybody here, give me another example of a gerund as a subject? as a subject. So it means that it's gonna be at the beginning of the sentence. So can, can anybody tell me a sentence with a gerund as a subject? Oh. Uh, listening music helped me uh, to get relaxed. All right. Now, listening music or listening to music? Listening to music. Uh huh. So, what is the correct one? Listening to music or listening music? Uh, listening music. Mm, are you sure? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's two. Listening. Okay. Yeah. Remember that, for example, for example, this word, listening. Uh, it's always together with two. They are always together. They can never be separate, all right? So I am listening to music. My brother listens to music, right? Another example, look forward, uh, look forward to. Oh, they can. They need to be together all the time. 
So I am looking forward to meeting a new, I don't know, friend, whatever, right? So those are examples of verbs that can uh, that we need to use with prepositions all the time. All right, awesome. But that was a good example. All right, so let's see, Jorge, give me another example with the subject, adjourn as a subject. Okay, eating is a uh, guilty pleasure. What was that again? Eating is a guilty pleasure for me. All right, oh, for me too. <laughs> All right. Yeah, eating is is my guilty pleasure. All right. Very good. Good job. Now let's go. Let's go to uh, number two. Now we don't have it as a subject. Fabricio, help us read number two, please. Uh, no, we can't, we can't hear you. We can't, we can't hear you. Nope. I mean, apparently the microphone is on, but- It's on, but uh, uh, now- you can Oh, now, on. yeah, better. Yeah, All right. much better. All right, I, I don't know what's happening because my, my settings are- normal but all right uh, the the second uh, example was direct object and the example was the team practice kicking all right okay so Fabrizio or anybody else can you tell me another sentence with the uh, gerund in this case is a direct or direct object You can take you can take a look at the example and then give me another one. Uh, Carla practice singing. Okay, Carla practice singing. Okay, that's a good one. Okay. Now let's see with the different with a different verb uh, other than practice. Let's see anybody else. Thank you, Fabrizio. Now, what about what, what about the rest? Like any other example with um, direct object using a gerund and using another another uh, verb. Instead. I enjoy dancing. Excellent. I enjoyed dancing. Awesome. That's a good one. Very good. Very good. Good job. All right. So let's move. We have the next one here. Now, uh, let's go with this one. Let's see, Camilo. Indirect object, the ballerina taught us dancing. Okay, the ballerina taught us dancing. Okay, so Camilo or anybody else here, tell me another example using a gerund as an indirect object, uh, taking uh, taking into consideration the example, these two might be similar, but they are not similar. Might be similar, but they are not. Look at this. Number one, we have practice, and Damn. right after practice, we have the gerund. Now, in this one, we have the verb. We have, uh, let me put it right here. We have a pronoun and then, and then we have the ing. So it's different. The cellular combines me buying, buying Conv a pencil. Convince? Convince me buying a pencil. <laughs> All right. Let's see. The thing is this, the sentence is good, but the question is, can I use convince with ing? Because there are some verbs that we can that we cannot use with ing. And there are some others that we can't use with them um, uh, with ing. 
What about convince? What do you think, everyone? I guess convince is the verb that it only can be used with um, infinitives. With infinitive. All right. So in this case, uh, I think it was Camila, right? In this case, we can say, um, I don't know, my brother convinced me to buy. So in this case, we cannot use, we cannot use an ing, a gerund. So let's try to think of another one. Let's Michael. Try. Uh huh. Oh, sorry. Uh, my cousin um spent um uh, her life uh, dancing. Spend her life dancing. Is yes. that what you said? Excellent. That's good. So that one we have we have uh uh spend like the base verb. Uh, her life is like the subject or like uh, the direct object and dancing, which is the indirect object. Very good, that was a good one. All right, so let's go to, this is very common. Maybe I can say that number one and the number four are the most common, all right? So what about number four? Ricardo, number four. All right, uh, number four is an object of proposition. All right. After, after studying, we took, uh, after studying, we took a break. Okay, excellent. Very good. So remember, this is a golden rule. If you see a preposition, the next verb needs to be with ing here in London and China, all over the world. All right? So remember, after a preposition, after a preposition, uh, we need ing all the time. Yes, all the time. Like this one. Can you think of another example, Ricardo, or anyone else, in which we can use a preposition and then a, a gerund? Um, and before swimming, we shouldn't eat. Excellent. Before swimming, we should we shouldn't eat. Now, what happened? What happens if I if I change the order of the sentence? Let, let me put it right like this. I'm gonna type it right here. Uh, we shouldn't it. You said before swimming, right? Yes. All right. So guys, what's the only difference between the sentence? Uh, above and the one Ricardo said. This one and this one. We are using a preposition in both. All right, after and before. All right, what's the only difference? When, when you use the preposition in the middle, you don't need to use a uh, comma. Perfect. Well done, Claudia. So in here, after studying, comma, we took a break, right? Uh, we shouldn't eat before swimming. We don't need a, a comma right here, right? That's the only thing. All right, so let's continue here. Claudia, now that I have you here, uh, let's go with uh, the last one, the predicate noun. A predicate noun, her occupation is studying. All right, and this one is super easy because we need to use the verb to be. So can you think of another, can you think of another um, sentence, everyone? Using a predicate now. Um, his hobby is cooking. Excellent. Easy as that, super easy. Thank you, Heidi. So okay. her, her hobby, it's, is cooking. Awesome. Very good. Okay, guys. So why is this important? Because as I said before, if you are sending emails, if you are in charge of people, if you communicate with your clients through emails or through chats, 
this is super good. This will give you, or this will give a good impression to the clients, to the customer, to the coworkers uh, about your English skill, all right? Good punctuation. Oh, we're gonna do some exercises about it. Uh, good punctuation, good uh, grammar, all right? Is gonna say a lot about you. Very good. So before we, we continue with the next topic and the last topic for unit number three, I mean, number two, uh, do you have any doubt about the gerunds? Any doubt that you might have? No doubts? Uh, I have a question. I have a, right. uh, another example for the predicate now, but I don't know if it's, if it's okay. Put it out. And the example is like um, her, her dream is to become a, a master chef. Oh, that one thing. Uh huh. Her dream is to become a what? A, a master chef. Yeah. A ma uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. That could be is to become. Yeah. That's a different one. Because in this case, you are using become. And with become, we can we need to use to. Because what what would uh, if we use Jared, we would say like uh, her dream is becoming a master chef. Yeah. Right, but it's much in that case. Remember that uh, the rules are not general for all the like, cases, right? There are some times when rules don't apply, like okay. in this. One. Mm -hmm. So it's much better to say, uh, "Is is to become master chef? Is to become an engineer, or something okay. like that?" All right, very good. Now, since you don't have any question at all, let's begin. Andrea, number one. I couldn't resist. Um, I'm, not, I'm not gonna say anything. Just, just give me, and I, I'm gonna mark the answer you give me. <laughs> okay, okay. So All right. I resist making jokes about him. All right, excellent. Good job. Let's see. Um, let me go in order. Uh, uh, Heidi, you're next. Number two. I always look forward to meeting you. All right. How do you know it's to meeting you, Heidi? Um, mm. Maybe because it sounded good or or how mm. did you how did you determine that it was meeting you? The answer is very simple, Heidi. Super simple. Um, because it, it acts like a noun? Like a noun? Not really. In this case, we, well, a gerund is a noun, definitely. But in this case, why do we determine that it's a gerund? Very easy. Because we have a preposition before. It. What is the preposition? Look forward to. Everything? Yeah. The three words uh, are like, Consider like one preposition. Look forward to. All right. Very okay. good. Awesome. Okay. So let's erase everything right now. Let's go with Ricardo, number three. Um, can you envisage winning a scholarship? Winning? A scholarship. All right. So it's letter A. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, let's go. One, two. Awesome. Very good. What is envisage? Is Any idea? To expect. To expect. All right. All right. Mm hmm to think about maybe something in the future, right? So that's envisage. All right, very good. Could be, could be anticipate. And that could be another synonym too. Awesome, Tatiana. Good job. So let's continue. Let's see number four, Fabricio. Oh, that's Would you mind? 
Go ahead. Would you mind bringing her with you? Would you mind bringing her? How do you know? Well, uh, in time, you are going to just like do it like very naturally. It'll come very naturally, right? But how do you know this one? It's bringing. How do you know? Why not to bring? Do well, you have any actually, idea? actually, it was because it sounded good to me. <laughs> yeah. It sounded correct. That's but, right. Uh, I'm trying to, to, to make it like a conscious uh, knowledge. So mm -hmm. I will believe that it wasn't uh, like in the looking forward. This was no preposition. It was just mine. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it, what function does exactly. But All right. that was my, my thing. <laughs> okay. So, so can, can you explain the, what was? Sure. The, uh, the key word is mine. This one is one of those verbs uh, which we can, which we need to use ing with all the time. So can I use mind and infinitive? Never, 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 never. So another example of those words, we enjoy. Somebody said enjoy, right? So I enjoy eating. Can I say I enjoy to eat? Never. That is grammatically incorrect. Incorrect all the time. So with enjoy, with mine, with dislike, with uh, um, expand, we, and there are some others, there are many others. With those, the gerund, the gerund is mandatory, right? So mind is one of those verbs, okay? Very good. Tatiana, number four, number five. I guarantee, um, what's the set? Yeah, thank you. I guarantee delivering this message. Delivering. Delivering. All right. I, I guarantee delivering this message or I guarantee to deliver. Well, you said deliver, right? Let's say, all right. So this is another, this is another verb. So now we know that with guarantee, with this one, it's mandatory to. So we need to use infinity, all right? So is there a way to know all this? Is there any rule? No, you need to learn all the verbs by heart. You need to memorize them. Oh, there's no rule for that, all right? So you need to you need to memorize the verbs that you're going to use with ing and the verbs that you're going to use with infinitive. There is no other way, all right? Let's go. Number six. Let's Where go. Where can we find all those all those verbs like that? I sent you a link. I'm going to send you another oh, one. Okay, okay. We have a list of them. Oh, it's huge. I mean, mm -hmm. but um, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you another one, which is uh, I think it's more complete. All right. Which, Let me one, look. which one is shorter? Because I mean, if we learn all the gerunds, mm -hmm. I don't know if, if that one is shorter. So now, so that we know that if not one of those is infinitive or something like that. Yeah, that's true. Infinite? The the ones with gerund is shorter. Sure. Okay. Yep, definitely. So okay. if you learn that, that's a good one, Andrea. Very good. If you learn the ones that go with Jaren, you automatically know the rest. It's infinitive. Good point. You made a point right there. Very good. All right. So let's go with um. Who? What was it? Number six. Anibal. What about it? She intends to change her job. Mm. To? Excellent. Another verb. Intend is with infinitive. Good job. Seven. This is for uh, uh, Camilo. Um, <laughs> he has reported seeing a white eagle. Eagle. All right. Seeing. All right, report it, remember, always with ING. Good job, Camilo. 
Let's go with Claudia, number eight. Chris has already offered to bring a bottle of wine. Awesome, offered with infinitive all the time. Very good, Claudia. Let's go with nine, uh, Jorge. She will certainly miss seeing her friends. Seeing her friends. Awesome. Very good. ING, Jared. Okay. And let's finish with the number 10. Is anybody missing here? Did I ask everyone? No, it's me. Okay. Wendy, let's go. Yeah. Will you remain to stand all day long? Okay, will you remain to stand? Let's see. Oh, all right. So we would remain. What do we need to use? But why we need uh, uh, ing? Ing, yeah. Okay, why? The question is why? Yeah, I am okay. asking why. Yeah. All right. Regretfully. There is no reason for that. Mm -hmm. There are no rules. So, uh, so like, <laughs> yeah. So, for example, for for this type of things, the verbs. Like for another example, like how to form the irregular uh, past participle. How to form that? There's no rule. You need to memorize. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kevin. All right. Excellent. Very good, guys. So would like, that was the last topic for today. I want to make sure, I think that in the platform, this is one of the first exercises that you covered. So I just want to make sure everything is clear with that. So let's see here. Would you, would you, I mean, would you mind? Do you mind? Can anybody tell me when should I use this once? When do I use would, do you mind? When, uh, I'm uh -huh. sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, Patty. <laughs> go ahead. Okay, uh, when you want to ask for something in a, uh, like a polite, yeah, a polite way. Awesome. When you want, uh, to ask for permission, when you want to request something in a very polite way in a polite manner, right? Good job. Let's see. Would you mind? I'm gonna give you an example. Oh, well, I know you know this one because you you uh, you uh, uh, did the the, uh, the the first part of the of the platform. So let's see. Give me examples with would you and do you mind? I need five. So I need five different people because I have like 10 people connected right now or nine, I think. Yeah, 10 people. So do, five of you, go ahead. Uh, would, you do, mind, would you mind uh, repeating the explanation? All right. Repeating the what? The exp oh, explanation. explanation. All right. Any other? Thank you. Will you be please so kind to close the door? Okay, let's see. Would you be please so kind to close the door? Okay, <clears throat> let's see here. It's a good one. The sentence is perfect. However, we are not using ing anywhere. So let's remodel. Let's uh, re write the sentence in a different way so we can use a gerund. The same sentence, the same meaning, but using a gerund. It could be, would you mind close the door? Okay, closing. let's see. Closing. Would you closing. mind? Closing the, closing the door. Closing. Closing. Oh, yeah. All right. It's the same thing, but now you are using a gerund. Would you mind closing the door? Now, if this is a good one, if I want to use please, where do I put the word please? 
Uh, that's uh, another question that I have. Even because right. of the platform, it's it's like uh, to to keep in mind that the police board shouldn't be used. All right. So I, I guess because with the the use of the words to mine is like uh, you are, are requesting the the in the polite way, right? In a polite way. That's it. Awesome. So by using would you you are being you are being very polite so basically we don't need the workplace now let's say that if i say would you mind closing the door please is that incorrect no it's not incorrect this even though you are using would you maybe it's not that frequent but it's not like mandatory that you need to avoid the workplace. I mean, it's it's optional. However, as I don't know who said that, I think it was Andrea or who said that, or I don't know. Who was it? was me about the-, the Oh, yeah. Wendy. Oh, uh, Wendy, thank we, you. We don't need to just, please, yeah. yeah. Okay, but this is not like restrictive, Wendy. If you want to use please, you can go ahead and do it. It's not restrictive. However, it's not mandatory because you are already using would you. Yeah. So it's like not. Kevin, if I use it, sorry to interrupt you. If if I'm adding is like uh I am adding uh an extra word, right? It's like yeah. a redundant. A redundant. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. okay. Very cool. Yeah. Can we use redundancy in English? Sure, definitely. It's not, it's not, it's nothing like it's prohibited. You can use it. Right. Now, you mentioned something that I want to, I want to type here right here. Sorry. That's a good example. Sorry to interrupt you. Okay. Can we modify this expression to make it a little bit better? Yes, the correct one for this one, keep in mind, because this is very useful when you are in a meeting, when you are talking over the phone, uh, oh, different ways. Sorry for, you can say both ways. Sorry for the interruption, all right? Or you can say sorry for interrupting you. It sounds better, all right? Wow, thank you. It's yep. similar when you say uh, thank you for asking or, or excellent. something. Like that. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Perfect example. That's a good one. So it's, as you say, thank you for being here. Thank you for um, paying the bill for me. It's like sorry for interrupting you. Sorry for, let's see another example. Sorry for uh, being late. Sorry for being late. All right. Thank you. Okay. This is gold for me. <laughs> right. it's awesome. Thank you. Very good. Okay. So let's see. Let me check the time right here. Okay. Let's see. We're going to move on. Just two examples right now. Remember, would do you mind? Look at the, at the, uh, the pattern. Do you mind? And just after the mind, you use a gerund. But what about this one? This is different. Let's see. Fabricio, can you please read the pattern? The pattern? Yeah. What's the pattern that we have at the top of the uh, screen? Okay, sorry. Sorry, can I get it? All right. Uh, wool, or do you mind, loss? Uh, SB, SB, loss. Is like, SB is like the abbreviation for somebody. Summary in mm -hmm. German. All right. So this is different. Let me give you an example and then uh, I will have, um, let's see, another example from Claudia and another example from Ricardo. I'm going to give you my example and then you give me another example following mine. All right. Would you? Mind me. Would you mind me? 
st stay in here. Oh, that's different. Because now we have something in the middle. It's someone. Let's say, Ricardo, give me another one with this with this pattern. You can use any pronoun, me, you, her, him, them, uh, us, any pattern. Just make sure to use a gerund after the pronoun. Uh, would you mind him? Swimming? Where? To make, uh, to make it more like, with a more with more sense, yeah, would you uh, we make him swim where? in the lake? In the lake, all right. Or we can say, would you mind? Would you mind him swimming in your pool? Yeah. Because remember that we are asking for permission, right? Or we are uh, asking for a request. And the lake, well, the lake can be private too. But uh, so, would you mind him? Swimming in the pool. Good job. Let's see. Who was the other? Who was the other uh, person to give me an example? Now, hey, okay, Claudia. Now we do you do instead of would. Okay. Do you mind her giving your book book? Okay, what do you mind her giving your book to whom? To whom? Would you mind? Do you mind her giving your book? Oh, book is double. Okay, so do you mind her giving your book to to make it better? Would you mind giving your book? Would you mind her giving your book to? To me. Classmate. Okay. To me. To the to the the classmates. All oh, right. Uh, away. Excellent. Oh, we can use an uh, uh, a noun. Uh, Pedro, would you like to? Would you like? Her, I mean, do you mind her giving your book to Pedro, or not? It's okay. I don't mind. All right, good job. Okay, so let's see. Ooh, time is running faster than me. Let's see another. Let me, do you have any question with this pattern? Basically, it's the same thing, guys. It's the same thing. The only difference is that we have an object. Me, him, her. But right after, we have a gerund. It's the same thing, all right? Now, let's move. All right, this is different. Pay attention to this one. I'm gonna give you <clears throat> two examples right here uh, for you to understand it. Maybe you already know, but uh, if you already know it, that's super. Let's use would, would you, mind if, oh, we have another element right now. We have if, which is that conditional, all right? So this is different. Would you mind, oh, mind, I'm sorry. Would you mind? Let's begin with do. Do you mind if I close the door. Where is the gerund? Where is the gerund? Can I use the gerund right here? The answer is no. All right. In this one, we are not allowed to use any gerund because I am using if. It's the same expression but I am using if. So I cannot say, for example, do you mind if, if I close in the door? Uh -uh. All right. 
do you mind if I close the door? All right, now look at this. Let me do another one with wood. Would you mind, would you mind if, if I sat here? Oh, now this is a little bit more complex. Why? Do you mind if simple present? All right. Would you mind if simple past? Past present. Can I say, can I say here? Can I say, would you mind if, if? I sit, would you mind if I sit here? This is wrong, all right? Why? Well, according to the grammatical rules, when you are going to use, do you mind if, the next verb is in simple present, do you mind if I turn up the volume? Do you mind if I use your cell phone? But it's different when I am using would. This is a different story. Would you mind if simple past? If I sat here, no seat. Would you mind if I sat here? Would you mind if I used your cell phone? Simple pass. Another example. Give me another example. One more. You're seeing the Would you? simple past? Oh, okay. Yeah. Would you mind if I... <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Okay. But, Would yeah. you mind if um, I went uh, out with your mother? Excellent. If I went. Awesome. You cannot say, do you mind if I go? No. Do you mind if I went? Now, I mean, would you? I'm sorry. If you want to use simple present, you need to use do you. Do you mind if I go? out with your friends? Do you mind if I use? Do you mind if I eat? All right. So in this context, do you mind? Simple present. Would you mind? Simple past. All right. This is super, super useful. This is pure grammar. All right, so take notes of that. All right, any doubt about it? No doubts? Okay. Then we can, then we can, um, <clears throat> we can, um, what you might call it, um, move on. Maybe we are not going to have time for it for this. And it's good for you because there was a homework related to this part. But um, we're going to do exercise number one together. And tomorrow we are going to do two more. All right, two more. And then you're going to have a homework that uh, uh, is going to be an audio. The same thing. All right. So let's see here. You're right. Frequently. So, common errors in emails. All right. I'm going to show you guys a small paragraph of an email. I'm going to leave the paragraph for a minute, read it, and tell me, try to tell me, try to identify the errors that you see in the email. All right. So remember, they can be punctuation errors. They can be words, verbs that are not used correctly. All right? So let's see. 
this is to uh, polish your uh, writing when you are typing in emails, all right? Let's see. I'm not going to rate it. You rate it and tell me the errors that you can find there. All right, <clears throat> I think you have uh, you had the time to rate it. So let's see. Hmm. Let me let me see. There is one, two, three. There is only three errors. Three. No more. Don't look for a fourth one. There is only three errors. Who can give me? Who can give it a try and tell me what's one of them? Um. I, I think uh, I will appreciate if everyone could without the it. I will appreciate it if. What was what's the error? Let me let me put it in a in a in a little box. Tell me what's the it. error. Just it. Okay. Let's see. Can anybody tell me another one? I think in the first line. Uh, the first it, one, uh -huh. like I would like everyone to remember, or everyone remembering that Mr. Lewis, maybe the okay, order of... this part, yes. Okay, I want to check it. What's the third one? If you can think about I it, I believe, um, I believe it's uh. This the board is the last one. Is it says we want to make sure uh, there is missing like uh, we want to make sure that everyone makes a good impression. Okay, so let's see here. La, we want to make sure everyone makes makes a good impression. I, I don't know if that one is another error. Sure, tell me. In he'll be in the office. Since I don't know, it's from. All right, let's see. We're gonna check it. Let's see. Anybody else? And I believe he's at the office. Who'll at be the at office? the office? Yeah. All right, let's see here. Mm, we're gonna check on it. Maybe it's correct. I don't know. We're gonna check on it. So, um, anybody else? Maybe for you, we have another error hidden right there somewhere. In the part we'll be visiting, I guess it's missing the subject. Visiting, what, which line? The uh, second where, line, after where? the comma. Okay, so what's missing here? The subject. Uh, a prospective client mm, will be visiting. Do you think so? Okay, I'm going to send you this right now. The only two correct, oh, so there are four, I'm sorry, there are four errors. So let me give you the ones that are correct. I'm gonna erase the ones that are incorrect. We're gonna see this tomorrow, okay, don't worry. This one is incorrect, I mean, this one 
it's incorrect, but only one, one part of it. So we can remove this one. This one is correct. This one is correct. This one is correct. All right. So that are two. That are two. There are two more. We're going to look into that tomorrow. All right. So we can polish those things because this type of exercise is very good for you to um, uh, polish your writing skills. Ricardo and Andre, do you want to say something? Oh, no. I just left my. Oh, all right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Awesome. Okay, guys. So uh, thank you for the time. Thank you for being here. Um, for you know, studying, for completing, for completing, for studying gerunds, right? The platform and all that. See you tomorrow, same time. We're gonna check some some uh, examples like this ones, and I'll explain to you the homework. Okay. So thank you guys again. Have a great uh, rest of the evening and enjoy your meal as well. Take thank care, you. guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Kevin. Bye. Thank you. Bye. bye.